Father, we just thank you today, Lord, yes, Lord for life in general. Yes. And Lord, today we pray in the name of the name that's ever above every other name, the name of Jesus. Yes. Lord, as the song has said, Lord, we pray for revival. We pray for restoration. We pray, Lord, to, Lord, for healing. We pray, yes. God, that fear would be done away with. Yes. So, Lord, tonight that you would provide for us that opportunity to minister the peace of God that absolutely transcends our understanding. You are the God who has created everything out of nothing. Yep. And Lord, you can make all things right. Yes, you can. You can take, Lord, the, the, the failures of our past and turn them into stories of victory. Yes, Lord. But it only happens when we come through you, your son, Jesus. Yes. Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Lord. We want to address you tonight, God. And and, and thank Jesus for all that he has I done on the Jesus. cross. And thank we thank Lord. you that his work, although yes. for our salvation was complete, but his work ain't finished. Yes, There's still work yet to be done. He's still yes, interceding Lord. for Lord us. Jesus. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for yes. providing us that medium through which we can stay connected. Father, yes. Son, Holy yes. Ghost, and us. Yes. Thank you that you abide in us yes. and that we abide in you. Thank you Lord, may your power be uh, overwhelming and in, in all of our situations, overshadowing in all of our darkness. And we give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen, amen. So we're still in the book of Jude. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, one thing I love about Jude. Well, here's the thing. Anybody besides me have an opinion on the book of Jude? No. So someone might say, well, why do you like it so much? Um, I like, I'm not real big on reading novels. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I'll read them. I mean, I'll read them. But I'll tell you what I do like. I like that powerful short story that I can comprehend and it grips me and I can get, and I can get a hold of it right away. And when you read the book of Jude, what I see here, this, this, this book is, uh, it's, I, I don't want to say condensed because that sounds like something was removed. You know, I mean, anybody, anybody here really like condensed it's soup? Compact. compact, amen. It's power packed. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't like, I don't like condensed milk. For, you know, because like, there's something wrong with it. I mean, yeah. I understand what you do with it, but uh, and it's, it's and it's important. But I just like that this is compact. 
And, and there, there is something about this that, that, that shares the word of God, shares the gospel, shares the grace of God in ways that it's, it's throughout all of the scripture, but it catches you where you are. One of the things that we find throughout these little books and certainly throughout the scripture is God is faithful. Amen. He has got us, and he is a he's a God of promises. Yes, he is. And someone might ask about those promises. The scripture talks about the promises of God are yes and amen yes. to the glory of God. Yes. Amen. Every promise that he's ever made. And you might think, why well, some of us, well, he sure is selfish. Yeah, he's got a right to be. Yes, and you does. might want to understand what that means. So have you ever have you ever really cared for someone or something so much that you you would do about anything? I mean, now think about this. In one sense, and some, and some people find it hard to understand that he offered his only begotten son yes. in exchange for us. Yes. What? That's not even a fair trade. But hold on. What he was showing us is the extent that he would go to in order to redeem us, in order to bring us back. And so when we look through this book, and, and, we, and I'm just going to kind of blast through it here because we're, we're just going to focus on a couple of uh, verses tonight. But here's what, here's what Jude says. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you to exhort, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept, crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out uh, for this condemnation, ungodly men, who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I um, there, I, I can't remember his name at the moment. Doesn't matter. All I know is that I've heard not just him, but recently I heard him again, and he made a comment. I don't think he really meant it like this. At least I hope he didn't, because if he meant what he said then uh, all I can do is pray for him um, and then tell him how wrong he is. First off, how many of you think that God would ever violate the law? No, he can't. He cannot violate the law. And but So in his preaching, uh, maybe he got a little overzealous, but in, in as talking about Jesus and about the love that he offers to us, he talks about how God violates his own law for justice through his son. I said, hold it right there. Uh, just so you know, I've got a note, and it's not like we know each other, but, and, and i got to believe that I'm probably not the only one that, I'm going to send him a friendly reminder. God did not violate any laws. Are you listening to me tonight? Yes. See, here's the, what we need to recognize, because that's kind of what we're seeing here, uh, who turned the grace of God into lewdness and, and denied the only Lord God and our, and our Lord Jesus Christ. What does that mean? First off, we need to understand that Jesus on the cross was actually fulfilling God's law. Why? How could you say that? The scripture tells me that. The, 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 the scripture says that, that there had to be a blood sacrifice. And what greater sacrifice would there be than the Lamb of God, the perfect Lamb that was slain? So anyway, let's move on from there. Um, all I'm telling you is I gave you that as an example so you can understand from this book, there's a lot of a lot of things that are here. Some things will get you where you are. Some things will put you on notice. To, hey, listen, you can't you can't believe everything a preacher says or anybody else says. As a matter of fact, you know what I say? Listen, don't take me at my word, but go to this word. Yeah. If I say something that's contrary to this, I, I hope someone would do what I'm about to do to this guy. <laughs> you know, somebody says you just want to go punch him right in the mouth. No, that's not. No, that's not how it works. Although you might want to. You might say, you know better. You know, I, I can, I, countless times, I mean, nobody here could ever believe, except maybe my daughter, my wife, anybody who really knows me, that I would ever be smacked in the mouth and my grandmother or my mother say, you know better, smack. Well, if I didn't, I do now. It only took once. It only takes once, <laughs> amen. So, my point, the point is that we need to recognize these things. And listen to this. He goes on and says, but I want to remind you, though you once knew this, think about, I want to remind you, though you once knew this, apparently some people have forgot, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. 
and the angels who did not keep their proper domain but left their own abode, okay. he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day, as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities around them in similar manner to these, having given themselves to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, and set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, although these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. But listen to this. Yet Michael, the archangel, mm -hmm. in contending with the devil when, in, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. So we'll go back to the smacking in the mouth of the hand, with the hand. Um, first off, you might want to consider who you are. The three things we've been talking about over the last couple of months that we really need to consider is this. You need to know who you are. You need to know where you stand and what to do. Because I promise you this. In most cases, especially in my younger days, if anybody but my mama or my grandma smacked me in the mouth. <laughs> somebody say, I, I got it, I got it. Um, my point is, you got to know who you are. Amen. <laughs> and then he goes on. He talks about uh, about the, the the apostates who are depraved and and, and, and doomed. Uh, and then he talks about apostates that were predicted. He says these are grumblers and complainers, walking according to their own flesh, and they uh, their mouth uh, with their mouth they uh, great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before the uh, the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lust. Don't have time to dwell there because that's not where we're necessarily going to be, although we're almost where we're supposed to be. I want you to notice grumblers and complainers, also those who would, and we, we normally want to just jump to these things, they're talking about uh, their own lust. Well, what is their own lust? Just the desires that they want. They want what they want when they want it the way they want it. Right. And you could go back up here and it talks about, you know, about who turned the grace of our God into lewdness and deny our only God. In other words, see, listen, God did not, he did not defy his own law. He didn't break any laws. He's fulfilling it. And only he could do that, by the way. Mm -hmm. you know, here's the thing. If, uh, brother, if I, if I offend you, if I come and I offend you, and your wife, if your wife comes to you and she says that, Hey, I'm sorry he offended you. Wait a second. That's not up to her. That's not right. Amen? So what has to happen is the forgiveness is between you and me. If the offense was towards you, you're the one. Or, wait, she, she could come to me and say, you know, I'm really sorry that you offended my husband. But that doesn't work either, does it? You got to know who you are, where you stand, and what to do. And I want you to hear something else what God has promised. See, God's a God of promises, and he, he, does not, he does not renege. He does not renege. Nope. But we need to recognize something. We still need to be someone who's in right standing with him for him to be allowed to make good on his promise. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about our, our standard of living, and our standard of living begins with a big fat H. What is that? Holiness. Holiness. That's what we long for. Holiness is what we need. That'd be a good song. I think it is. Um, but here's the thing. I can't do it. You can't. Nobody can do this. Live a holy life without his help. Amen. Did you know God promises to help you in this regard? Yeah. And, and But he also tells us what we can do to get along side his help first off you need to accept it in verse 20 it says but you beloved building yourselves up on your most holy faith praying in the holy spirit keeping yourselves in the love of god mm -hmm. looking for the mercy of the lord jesus christ unto eternal life and there's a there the doxology at the end of this i'm going to actually skip a couple of verses here because uh, i want you to see this here what, what he's promised and then we're going to back up to verses 22 and 23 because in verse 24 it says now to him who Jesus. Jesus. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling. Now, right now, how many want that promise from God? 
He is able to keep you from stumbling mm -hmm. and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. You need to know who you are, where you stand, what to do. Man, when you stand before God, what do you think you're going to do? And how you, how do you, what's he going to do? Anybody besides me want to hear, well done, my good, my good and faithful servant. But before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever and ever. He Amen. will keep you. Did you hear that? He can keep you from stumbling. But how do we help others? How do, and how do we know, because we'll talk tonight, I want to talk a little bit about mercy, uh, which is, is coming from these two verses. And uh, in verse 22, it says, um, well, you, you come out of this, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. On some have compassion, making a distinction, but on others, save them with fear, pulling them from the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Mercy. Mercy has a purpose. And it's not just to make you feel good. It's not, certainly, certainly it's not just to make you feel good about what you've done. No. Uh, is, are you understanding what I'm saying? You know, yeah. against him have we sinned. It, yeah. Maybe I sinned against you, but really, and listen, God's watching. Mm -hmm. If I sinned against you, I sinned against God. That's right. And that's why, that's why David said, it, you and you, O Lord, have I, have I sinned in your sight? Have I, you know, have, I've offended you, God. So mercy points us in the right way. That's the purpose of mercy. Yeah. There are times when mercy doesn't isn't going to be proper at that at, a, at some given time. But in one sense, sometimes justice is mercy. Grace is that what undeserved favor. But mercy is what you get. And you know, after and always after grace comes mercy. I mean, when was the last time that you got lost in the dark? <laughs> well, I mean, okay. When was the last time? Maybe, maybe you you haven't been lost in the dark and you can't remember. How about when was the last time you were in an unfamiliar place? Every day. <laughs> and you weren't really right. sure where you're going. You didn't know which turn to Because I've never next. been here before. You've never been here before. We in just so you know, you you've never lived this, this day before. Right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I I just I just had uh, one of those moments. Just this last week, um, and I thought, I, you know, I, I travel a lot, and quite often I don't take the main roads. I like to jump off, and you know. But uh, this last week, I was I went to uh, to to visit a, a friend of mine in in, in Cass County, actually, lives in Marcellus, and I left here. I've never gone to this place from this direction. I'm usually coming from the other direction, and so it's taken me this to this place, and I've never seen these. I, I didn't know that Cass County had so much farmland like this and such and then some of the I mean it's huge it's just and and then you get to these at one place and I'm thinking I, what do I do just take a walk did I take a wrong turn and now I'm in southern Ohio I mean the hills <laughs> are up and down and so, anybody been in southern Ohio they're always you know even even some of the main roads are still on a two track and they're like this and up and down and around and I didn't even know that, that there were that many lakes in Cass County <laughs> so that was my trip on the way there I thought, man this is cool I, I hope it, I hope I can come back this way. So I get in my car and I get ready to come home. Everything seemed to be fine. It took off. GPS is taking me back the way it took me. And then I notice, what's wrong with this thing? No signal. Hello, what's wrong with you? What? Pushing the buttons? It's frozen. I'm driving along and I realize I'm, I'm you know, there was no yellow brick road. <laughs> yeah. the wrong road. There were no stars. Yeah. I'm not sure which way north, south, east, or west is. No, I'm well, seeing names of roads I don't remember ever seeing before. Apparently, I didn't pay attention on the no, way there. No walls of Jasper. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I finally got to a place. You know, I said, "Okay, this has got to stop." So I did. I stopped. I pulled my battery out and put it back in again. Oh. Now the phone won't come on. Oh. Okay. I'm gonna, here's what's this though. I'm gonna find my way home. I am. So, so I get in the car and I'm and I'm making turns. I think, all right, I'm, I'm pretty sure I gotta go this way. 
You know, I circled that lake three times before I realized. <laughs> I stopped again. Yeah, if you don't have the directions, then... Do you know what? Did you know if you turn left enough, you're still going right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. And again, and again. Did you go, to, go past any gas stations? None. That, I was concerned about that, too. So I finally, I finally stopped. So, all right, this is it. Take the battery out. Plug it in this time. Then the Samsung insignia came up. Oh. <laughs> and I was so close to being on the right road. What am I telling you? You might be real close to being on the right road, but you've got things going. We have things going on in our life, and get, wait, not only you, but there's some other people that got stuff going on in their life right now, and they're a mess. I um, I spent some time on the phone today. Um, I, I now realize that sometimes the Lord does this to me, but I got I was supposed to go somewhere today, and I woke up this morning and said I am not going anywhere except that you know, that room with the porcelain throne, you know. Uh, so anyway. I said, I'm not going anywhere. I made up my mind. As soon as I made up my mind, uh, my stomach settled and everything else. And I decided I'm just going to go to church all day. So I spent some time on the phone with some folks today. And can I tell you, they needed somebody to pull them out of the fire. Not all of them needed that. Some of them needed something else. So when you look at this, we, we see, you know, we get disoriented. And that's some of these people I talked to today, they were disoriented. And when we get disoriented, sometimes you feel helpless. I looked to the stars. There wasn't none to see. I could Wait a minute. The sun's not anywhere to be seen. I don't know, north, south, east, or west. I've never been this place before. My last, my last hope was I was going to knock on somebody's door. I just say, so you know, what was I going to do? I was going to do what men don't do very well. Ask for directions. <laughs> Can you help me? I mean... Asking for help. You know, asking for help takes some courage. And most of us, when we ask for help, we expected one of two reactions. Do it yourself. Yeah, we could get that. We're either going to be condemned for getting ourselves into the situation to begin with, or the person will respond with compassion. Someone will make fun of us, well, you're too busy trying to make fun of yourself, but right now you're, no, it's just not going to work. But instead, they might show you compassion, and they might actually lead you in the right direction towards your destination. I, I don't know very many people, there have been a few, but most people have been one with compassion. See, when we're lost, what's this? When we're lost, when we're confused, we're not really sure which way to turn and what to do. Condemnation only makes a person feel more hopeless. Mm -hmm. On some have compassion, making a distinction. Now that same person you show compassion to may, may need that next part of the verse, but others save with fear, pulling them from the fire. That smack in the mouth, I know better, <laughs> just so you know I knew better from then on amen see compassion because and, and, what we learn here in, in Jude right here it says it tells us to be merciful to those who doubt in many, a lot of times you know we, we I'll, let me put it this way we've got to be very careful because I, 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 maybe you're like me I think most everybody is how many of you like to lose um, oh no, no, how many you like to win? Yeah. Can I get an amen? Amen. For the win? amen. But many times, what we think we need to do to win <coughs> is to have a debate or an argument or start something up or whatever. And unfortunately, what quite often happens is there's a stalemate. Well, not really. There's never truly a stalemate. If you wanted to win somebody over... And honestly, most people who are in, in some of the situations that I might be alluding to, which we won't get into details tonight, but they, they, don't like the, they don't like the place they're in in their life. They don't like it. That's right. So you walk away, they walk away, nothing, nothing was determined, nothing was settled. But sometimes we are in such a hurry to, to win the fight. We need to realize that there's another way of fighting this battle. 
Because, you know, in, in all honesty, what it is is this. Did Jesus die on the cross to frighten us? No. To scare no. us? No. Um, and in one sense, it is kind of scary, though. Mm -hmm. Can I get an amen? Amen. Yeah, because, because that's the wrath we'll receive if we don't accept That cross was for you. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? The cross was for you. But Jesus is, but not anymore. But not anymore, because I have gone to the cross for you. Mm -hmm. I have become sin for you. I have taken your sin upon my body. Yes. This is my body broken for you. This is my blood. You see, so compassion is what rescues us, and it shows us the right direction. And, and, and another side of this, because some, and hopefully you can find ways to appropriately use what I'm telling you tonight. It's right here in, in, in the scripture, but you know, you've got you've got some battles that need to be won. Maybe it's in your household. Maybe it's in your. Maybe it's just. My, maybe it's just a friend. Maybe it's, maybe, it's, maybe it's your spouse. Maybe it's your children. Maybe it's somebody else's kids. But somebody out there is in a situation right now where you so want to see them come to Jesus. And not just so they can come with you. You see, that's the whole right. thing. You've got to make it. It's, and get this. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about him. If you want to be in the wind, it's got to be for him. And Jesus said, without me, you, can't do it. you can do nothing. Right. And so we get back to this because when someone's faith is wavering or, or maybe there's someone who's actually, they're, they're in this situation or they're in a circumstance where their, their mind right now is thinking about, you know, maybe there is a God. Or maybe, you know, someone says, yeah, there is a God, you know, but what we need to do is to be able to put them in a position where they can consider the fact that he is he is knowable, although you might not see God, but you can know him. You can hear from him. How many of you know you can hear from God? Amen. Amen. So the best thing that we can do is show them mercy. And then point them where? To Jesus. We all know what it's like to doubt. Yes. Even the most faithful. There are a few people that I know so they're so they were they're so devout, they're so dedicated, and they're so faithful, but I also have been with them when they went through some terrible things. And their faith began to waver. Should I have smacked them in the mouth and said, You know better? No. Yes. And yes. <laughs> yeah. It uh, depends on, I, there are some places I've gotten to in my life where somebody needed to just like. <laughs> Shake you. Yeah, yeah, like. Wake up. Oh, wait, you know, right. sis, thank you. Did you see what she did there? Wake she up. she just confessed that she's human. Oh, sorry. And then once in a while, <laughs> once in a while she needs a little encouragement. <laughs> and so does her husband. Yep. So does the grandkids and the kids, and so do every one of us. Every mm -hmm. once in a while, you need to have someone <clears throat> to sit down and, and listen. Sometimes those talks that you might get might be you might have presume you, you might have preferred the smack in the mouth <laughs> because it might have been a little bit more uh, less painful. But so here's the thing tonight. Let me ask a question, and, and maybe because uh, if you if you had the bulletin, how have you? Uh, well, I, no, let me make, turn it the other way around. How have others shown you mercy and grace when you were doubting? When you were in a tough time? When you were going through some really bad stuff that you thought you never could go through? Yeah. Anybody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how did others show you mercy and grace? Now... Right now, there's probably somebody, one, maybe one person, that might come to mind. Maybe it was that auntie, or maybe it was your neighbor, or maybe it was a, a, a friend, you know, a co-worker. Or granny. Or a granny. A, oh, a granny, yeah. Let's use that. Mm -hmm. And she just continued to preach at you. Um, <laughs> but the idea, wait, 
know who you are, know where you stand, know what to do. Now, if it had not been her, it had been anybody else, it might not have been so well received. So, how has others shown you mercy and grace during your time of trouble? Maybe you got called to sit down. Or maybe you got called to stand up. Maybe you just got called out. And in some cases, it would seem like smack in the mouth would have been faster. Just to remind you that you know better. Maybe you've had those situations. And I've had a few circumstances and situations uh, in my, I'll just say, I wanna, I'll, I'll move forward, not just in my faith walk, but my ministry walk, where I've had my pastor or some other elder sit me down and say, I can still remember in, in Kalamazoo, um, there was a deacon there, an elder, and uh, we were experiencing some things, and apparently I must have, must not have my poker face on, because who, wear, who wears a poker face in church? A lot of oh, people. Oh, I was going to say. <laughs> apparently, I, apparently, I had my hand was was being seen. Were you doing this? And he call, so he calls me in, he calls me into my office. Wait, he called you in your own in office. In my office. He's an elder. He can do that. <laughs> calls me into my office. And I, and, I, and I said, I'll be right there. He says, no, now. <laughs> yes, sir, Brother Ingram. <laughs> so we go down there. And I walk in the door. He's sitting in my chair. Uh -oh. <laughs> and then he says, have a seat. We close the door. I'm thinking, that's my words. That's my job. <laughs> Wait a second. At that moment, that was his. You know who you are. No reason. Do you think that just anybody could do that? No. no. And know what to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to go through the sort of details, but see, the thing is, I was the pastor of youth and family ministries. And so I dealt with a lot of families. Can I tell you that families got, all guys' children's got troubles. Yeah, no. <laughs> but he sat me down, and after he got done with me, I would have rather had that smack in the mouth. <laughs> but by the time it was over we both got ugly oh. but you know what I was a better I think I felt I became a better man because of that encounter on some have compassion on others win them with fear pulling them from the fire you know he did both in that one sitting mm -hmm. yeah, see we all know what it's like to doubt and just to be clear why I'm, I keep hitting that word doubt, doubt, doubt. Every time you doubt, that is an indication of either unbelief or misbelief. Mm -hmm. And right now, everybody here tonight could say that prayer. Lord, I believe, but help, help me with my unbelief. unbelief. Mm -hmm. So again, and I want to, if, if, you, if you think you can tell us something tonight, maybe give us, your brothers and sisters here some practical counseling or some instructions. What's one practical way that you can show compassion and kindness to somebody whose faith is wavering? Very often just a good word. A good word, okay. Brother? I was in a hardware this afternoon getting some stable to treat some gas and motors. Rich uh, Shoemaker working behind the counter there. And I happen to mention, I've known Rich, we went to school together and so forth at River Valley. And uh, I told him about these things I have to have done with my heart. And he says, I had the same things done. And he says, you know what they done? They apologized me for doing them to me after it was all over with. <laughs> Man, that made me feel a whole bunch better, you know. It gave me confidence to, to go ahead and not worry about them things, you know. So were you, were you, would, you, would you confess your weakness tonight of... Worrying? Yes, I have a weakness of worry. Anybody else have a problem with worry? Sometimes. Worry. I worry about every darn thing. I, Ashley, I do too. Just yeah. about everything. You know what worry does? Make sure no, it robs you of your joy right now. <laughs> Stop it. What'd you say? I resemble that. Right <laughs> <Like> here. <laughs> I just said make sure you grow Except old. Except for William. Make sure you uh, get wrinkles. 
look, 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 so what, look. again, what, what's a, give, give me an example. What's a practical way that you can show compassion and kindness to somebody whose faith is wavering? Words of encouragement. Words of encouragement. Pray for them. Pray for them. Guidance. Call them. Call them. Say, hey, I was thinking about you today. It was good thoughts. Hey, Pastor, both of these verses, 22 and 23, if you can't do them with love in your heart for the people, you're not the person to be doing it. And Linda brought that up Sunday night after I made a comment about speech can either condemn or it can edify, but if you can't do either one of these... Sometimes, though, you may be winning somebody with fear. It may not seem like you love them. I know. Yes, you're right there. You're absolutely right. When that, that brother called me to my office... Yeah. <laughs> yes. I have a question for you. Yes. Oh, what was your attitude towards that? I'm asking that like because it literally it tickles me pink inside every time you speak because I'm doing my devotional like I'm supposed to every day. And today okay. the topic was about your brothers and sisters and coming to them and being able to listen and what's your attitude if somebody were to, an elder were to come to you and say something to you about maybe how you were acting or how you should change something. So I was just curious. How did you feel in that moment? Oh, in that moment? Yeah. <laughs> like, what was your attitude which, which, towards it? At which moment? <laughs> when he was in your <laughs> office telling you hey, what to be doing. <laughs> well, the whole thing is you have to understand this. You know, that, you know first off, you know, we, we are to respect those and, and, uphold, and, and esteem them who are over us in the Lord. And and at that moment, you got to know who you are and know where you stand. Because at this point, wait, he's an elder, but I'm a pastor. But wait, he's an elder. And did you know that uh, they work to, in, in, in the body of Christ? They are right side by side. Yep, I read that the other day. And uh, although I would tell you, this man, this man was humble. Uh, this man, uh, if you, you know, I mean, not everybody would see this side of him. And, I, and there were times I think, oh, I, he needs to do this to some more people, but yeah. <laughs> but he doesn't do it to ev just everybody, okay? This is and, you, and anybody who's been in my ministry long enough, you'll hear me say this: the body has to learn how to talk to itself. That's right, absolutely. And every part of us have a part to play, but in order to do that, you've got to know where you stand. That's right. You know yeah. what part do you play? Who are you? And um, you know, I've I've had uh, and I've well, not just myself, but other pastors. <laughs> Well, because you're a pastor, you're going to listen to me. Yeah, that was received real well. <laughs> Wait a second. Apparently, you don't know me that good. But um, no, yeah, it, I, I can tell you. I mean, there was a range of. I don't know if I call them emotions, but there was emotion in it. Especially when I came in. It, I mean, at that moment, Wait, what what was his statement? He took my chair. What's his statement? Yeah, I'll, I'll put it like this. So you'd have to met the guy. Because he was a bit bigger than me, uh, but much older too. But I was much bigger. I mean, you got to realize I was in my prime, right? Anyway, my point is, I realized at that point he made a statement before he said a word mm -hmm. when he took that chair, mm -hmm. and I and I I received it. And then when he told me to sit down, I, are you with me? Yeah. But the whole time. And today I am so grateful for what he did for me because mm -hmm. from that moment forward, I mean, I look by, I look back now and I think there was a there was a transition in my life, in in my ministry at that point. You want if I call it min ministry, but the ministry that I work in, and how I how I go about doing ministry. Because see, even back then there was still a side of me that, that would probably strike out. He never did. Praise the Lord. But I think he saw something. Maybe, he, maybe you know what he might have seen? He might have seen the old man getting ready to come out. Mm -hmm. Did you know you can't let that old man come out? No. Amen. Amen. Any questions, any comments? Next week, by, by the way, anybody know what I'm preaching Sunday? Beyond the pearly gates. Jesus. Beyond the pearly gates. <laughs> so it's in the, bull, it's in the bulletin. <laughs> Uh, next week we'll still be in the book of Jude. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But um, the uh, and uh, the uh, the topic will be: Are you getting good advice? <laughs>
So uh, I just encourage you to, to remember all these things and continue to pray. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on. Some of you may or may not know that uh, Sister Linda's brother passed away last night. Day before. Day before. And uh, it was rather unexpected. Mm -hmm. Not totally, but rather. Um, you know, uh, somebody says the age of somebody. You know, hey, you're in your 90s? I might, I might say, okay, it's kind of expected. But anything before that? No, it's not expected. His vitals were all good. This, yep. And all that. Get him in the ambulance. <laughs> and then all the vitals started going haywire. And he passed right there in the ambulance in his driveway. Well, we're going to do one more song tonight before we dismiss. Uh, but I do want to encourage you um, uh, to do exactly that with each other. Lear learn, learn to look on folks with compassion. Yes. You know, because sometimes this doesn't work. <laughs> That's a good way for no, me to leave. No, no, no. <laughs> or open my mouth and give the ass to leave. <laughs> she, know, she knows that look. Yeah, my dad's about the only one that can give me that look, and I'll either push it or I'll walk away. <laughs> uh, the idea, though, here's the thing, though. If I look at her like that, she knows she, knows she just takes it for what it's meant for, you, man. Because I know who I am, I know where I stand, and she knows where she I'm stands. I'm sorry. So, anybody got any prayer requests? Anything special you'd like to pre bring it up to the Lord? Yes? Pray for my cousin. Um... I, I, I told the pastor, yes. um, she went to the hospital yesterday, I believe it was, and today we found out that she's in the last stages of liver cancer. Mm. Mm. So, and she was name? A, her name is uh, Brenda. Brenda. So that, you know what, that whole first song could be for her mm -hmm. and all those who know her, amen. Anybody else? Yes? Uh, lady at work, she's... Uh, the head of the produce, produce, not produce, but produce. Okay. Milk stuff. Her name is Kim. Um, her father passed last week. Oh. Aww. Yeah. I could give you a long list of that that's been going on, but can I tell you, um, the job that I went to um, uh, the last couple of days, actually I, I left on Tuesday, was there yesterday, and the man I was supposed to work with, he wasn't there because he had to go to the hospital because mm. Clark came into the world. So we had a, he had a baby, he had a baby boy, and then I showed my wife, and I sent some others pictures of. Uh, I like the name too. The, uh, Clark. <laughs> the uh, uh, young Lambert baby, one of uh, Richard and Sally Lambert's granddaughters, got a beautiful little baby. Am I right? Yeah. You just wanted to. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but we do know that there's a lot of folks um, unexpected departures. And uh, along with that, uh, as 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 we're speaking of that, and um, I mean, you, you can, I, I I don't want I decide, I don't want to be a spoiler, uh, but I want you to come in anticipation, as I do the very best I can to deliver the message beyond the pearly gates. Uh, and as I was talking with a couple this uh, this week, even before I heard of all this stuff happening, and certainly after I got your message, I think it's a timely message for us. Is this all there is? Turn to your neighbor and say, no way. No way. No way. But it can no get way. pretty good here, can it? Oh, man. Amen. Well, let's worship the Lord. Uh, okay. If you would all stand and pray, and then we're going to okay. sing and dismiss. Okay. And remember Brad Curtis. He's no longer yeah, in ICU. Get... Okay, great. Oh, I'm sorry. Sis? Look at this. Do you want to start it? Do you want to kick off a prayer? Come on, sis. You can do it. Dear Father in heaven, we just love you and thank you for who you are. You are a creator. You are a redeemer, Lord. You are a keeper. You are a sustainer. Yes, Lord. Your word yes. lights our way, Lord. Mm. Father, we just thank you, God, about how it is that you do light darkness. The Word tells us that darkness is as light to you. That, Lord, there's nothing hidden from your sight. And, Lord, we lift up these families, Lord, uh, uh, who have received this bad news. Lord, for Brenda, 
for the bad news she's received and Lord for these who've lost their loved ones that it seems as if there should have been a comma suddenly a period shows up in their life Lord we just ask tonight God that you would help us uh, to be able to encourage others with words of hope or not not things that uh, are just easy to say but some things are hard to say but let us come to the knowledge of your son in a, such a way that Lord that when we come into contact and we reach out and Lord what certainly when we're fellowshipping with these people that Lord that they realize that they've been in the presence of greatness wherever we go Lord yes. that you would be with us yes. Yes, Lord. Lord let our Thanks. let our mouths be opened and speak the goodness that you have shown to us through the cross and Lord let our hands be anointed as your spirit flows through us that God that we will transfer Lord the, the spirit of, of, of uh, peace and a healing hand God that you would by some means Lord anoint us God to be able to comfort the brokenhearted we ask this in Jesus name Amen Amen. 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 Is your mama okay?
You shall ask anything in my name. Whose name? Jesus. Jesus. Ask anything in his name. And I will do it. And he will do it. Yes. Father, thank you tonight, Lord, for your presence and for those who fellowship tonight. We ask God that as we just uh, to just disperse and we head to our various oh, homes and uh, finishing up whatever we're doing in our evening, that, Lord, that we continue to remember that you are with us wherever we go, whatever we do. Lord, we pray, Lord, that the spirit of peace would go with us and that the spirit of compassion shines upon us. And that not only would it shine upon us, but God, it would shine through us. We ask this in the lovely name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. And Pastor, uh, we'd like to say a prayer over the offering. Uh, before we dismiss uh, our precious Father in heaven, you're the Holy One, Father. We seek 